also, because we've got Father's Day, there's so much uh, that we can relate to, um, especially there'll be a few fathers, a few dads over here, um, and um, I think we're supposed to be, be able to relate as well to God in, in all that we do. I mean, just listening uh, earlier, and we were listening about the light and the light within us. I love the way the, the ancient writings of the Old Testament start off when they talk about God. And the first thing God does, if you can imagine he, he was on a stage, if it was, a, it was a stage show, everything would be blacked out. And the first thing that God does by introduction, he says, let there be light. Boom. And there was light. And I just imagine a stage all of a sudden completely filled with light. And this is how our Heavenly Father introduces himself to the whole of the cosmos. And I just find it absolutely incredible. Um, I'm, um, uh, I'm, I'm going to look at... Uh, a few things that Jesus said about the Father. Um, Jesus is the revealer of the Father in all he does, all he was, all he said. He, he told stories to explain who the Father was and explain the nature and the character of God himself. Because God, the, the whole concept of God can be really scary. Because we know how finite we are, we know how weak we are, we'll fail, we actually know that making mistakes and messing things up is just a part of being human. Because we do, don't we? We all mess up, we have to learn how to say sorry. Uh, I've been married for 33 years this year, I've learned how to say sorry quite uh, proficiently actually now after all of these years. What a long-suffering, amazing wife, Katie. Um, <laughs> And, um, and being a father, it, it, really, it really struck me that actually being a father myself, it took the birth of my first child to really begin to understand love, really understand love. The sort of love that, yeah, you could easily lay your life down for this child and your whole family, you start to recognise the value of family and, and love is so deep. It is so, so deep. When those kiddies start coming along and you, you kiss goodbye to good night's sleep and, um, and you realise that actually the dads, you know, we were you know, the head of the household and the child comes along and you kind of go down a step, don't you? Because there's other people more important than you. And as you get more kids, you're going down and down in the queue of importance. Then we got a dog and I was even below with a dog. Oh, it's just unbelievable. <laughs> It's just me, it's just dad. Yeah, so, um, okay. <clears throat> so, um, looking at what Jesus said, Jesus revealing the Father and the nature and character of God. You know, um, what amazes me about how the Bible describes God in the Trinity, this eternal perfection of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And God creates the heavens and the earth. He creates man and woman and he loves them and he blesses them and do you know what right from the beginning we walked away from God and we think of that beautiful light and yet we walk away from the light and we see a world today that has walked away from light and it is full of trouble it's full of suffering and, um, and full of sadness it's full of violence um, we can see things getting a bit nasty again um, in the Persian Gulf, you know, saying, oh, what on earth is going on over there? You know, and we think, oh, Lord, we need your light. We need our Heavenly Father as human beings. We really, really do. And so Jesus, the, the second person of the Trinity, he breaks out of eternity. He comes down to earth, fully God, fully man as the person of Jesus Christ and he says I only say what the father tells me what to say he only speaks what the father gives to him and the Spirit of God is moving on the surface of the deep and we see that uh, within life today and uh, do you know what um, the Bible tells us 
anyway how the Spirit teaches us what to pray, shows us what to pray. So it's God telling us what to say to God. It's, it's really quite an incredible thing. God wants to be so involved with us. So anyway, <clears throat> uh, what is our Heavenly Father like? Jesus tells this story. There was a man who had two sons. The younger one said to his father, Father, give me my share of the inheritance. So he divided his property between them. You say, wow, this son only cares about his father for what he can get out of him. This is not a good son. This is not, we can see this right from the beginning. Not long after that, the younger son got together all he had and set off for a distant country and there squandered his wealth on wild living. After he'd spent everything, there was a severe famine in that whole country and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to a citizen of that country who sent him out to feed his pigs. Now you can see that this is a perfect storm, isn't it? You can see this lad is not good. Um, and for a Hebrew to, to leave the, the fatherland, as it were, to take the God-given inheritance and squander it, this was just so, so terrible. And then, of course, the picture is being painted, and Jesus is deliberately painting this picture. He ends up feeding pigs. Okay, so we, know, we can see where this is going. This is a vile story. This is not a good lad. And he got hungry. He longed to fill his stomach with the pods that the pigs were eating, but no one gave him anything. When he came to his senses, he said, How many of my father's hired servants have food to spare? And here I am starving to death. I'll set out and I'll go back to my father and say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. So he got up and he went to his father. But... While he was still a long way off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion for him. And he ran to his son and he threw his arms around him and kissed him. This is a guy fresh out of the pigsty. Okay? And the father sees him on the horizon. He's looking for him. He wants him. He desires him. He loves his son. This is the bad son, and he wants him, he loves him. And he's, you know, he's hugging him, and it, it's still quite incredible. And the son has worked out what he's going to say. And, he, and the son says, Father, do you remember that prayer? Our Father. The first thing that is said is Father. I'm going to look at that in a minute, because I, I just think that is so profound, it's fantastic. He says, Father, I've sinned against heaven and against you, and I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. Do you know what? The father doesn't even engage in that conversation. The father said to his servants, Quick, bring the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Bring the fatted calf and kill it. Let's have a feast and celebrate. For this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they began to celebrate. Okay, here we, we just see a picture of our Heavenly Father. It's really, really quite incredible. Do you know what? Father loves people. And we mess up, we do, we make so many errors. I've been a religious man now for 35 years and I mess up. I know I make mistakes and there's stuff I don't want to be doing and I'm doing it and I'm and it, all sorts of things. I get angry and I'm, I'm mean and I'm proud. You know, I don't want any of those things. Every day I need to come to Father and pray, Lord, forgive me. I, just, I want to walk after you. I want that light. I want to follow that light. Help me in my human nature. Now, meanwhile, the older son was in the field, and when he came near to the house, he heard music and dancing. 
So he called one of the servants and asked him what was going on. Your brother has come, he replied, and your father has killed the fatted calf because he's taken him back safe and sound. The fatted calf was something that they kept for special occasions. You know, this was really, really special. And the older brother became angry and refused to go in. So his father went out and pleaded with him. Again, the father is pleading with another of his sons. But he answered his father, Look, all these years I've been slaving for you and never disobeyed your orders. I'm getting hot now. <laughs> I'm boiling hot. I'm melting. Right. <clears throat> but the father answered, Look, all these years um, you've been with me. And... Um, Sorry, the father, you've always been with me and everything I have is yours. And it was because the other part of the inheritance had, had gone and then. But we had to celebrate, celebrate and be glad because your brother was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is now found. Do you know the irony of this is the brother was technically right, wasn't he? Because this, this other brother was terrible. He wasted the family inheritance, which was this God-given gift on terrible, wild living. And yet the father takes him in. So everything that the older son said was right. But that isn't how our Heavenly Father works. That isn't how he functions. And this is why Jesus is telling the story. He's revealing the nature and the character of the Father. God loves us. He loves people. He loves his children. And even when... What was that? A little bit, thanks. I'll just take a sip. Lovely. Oh, it's nice and cold. I'll pour the rest of my head. No. <laughs> Our Father loves us so much. Heavenly Father's heart breaks when he sees us, not just struggling, but messing up and doing things wrong. The Bible says how his heart is filled with pain when he sees the violence in the world. And, do you know, we see on the news virtually every day some kind of vile um, act of violence, where it be war. Um, there's all this stuff going off in Hong Kong at the moment. I don't know if you've seen a million people on the streets. Oh, my goodness. Uh, the violence towards women. Um, violence in all sorts of ways and it is so sad it is really sad and that breaks father's heart but you know he wants so much to put his arms around us and kiss us and put a ring on our finger you know because his heart his character is love and forgiveness and that is amazing and it's good news for us it's really really good news for us Okay then, so moving on, that's, that's just one little story. I won't, I won't be all night, don't worry. Or there's a clock, I'm keeping an eye on the clock. Um, we've done the Lord's Prayer today and I really, really love it. And there's two versions of that. There's one in the Gospel of Matthew and there's one in the Gospel of Luke. And I'm looking at the one in the Gospel of Luke. And it came about because Jesus was praying... And when he finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray, just as John taught his disciples to pray. Now, it seems to me that they were sitting about waiting for him to stop praying, because he was a man of prayer, he's always praying, so they just sitting there waiting. Oh, he stopped, right. So they get talking to him. And John was Jesus' cousin, and he was the one who carved the way for Jesus, saying, there's one coming who's going to change the world. He is going to absolutely change the world. And then along came Jesus. And Jesus said, okay, so when you pray, this is how you pray. And it just says this, Father. That's how he starts. Father. Because that is what God is. Our Father. And we talk to him. You know, it's, it's absolutely beautiful. And, it, and, it, and the word in Aramaic was a very intimate word. It's like daddy, uh, papa, baba. You know, it's, it's a very intimate word. He's saying, father. And then he says, hallowed be your name. You're holy, you're righteous, you're pure, you're perfect. And yet I can still speak with you. Isn't that amazing? This is the father 
who when the son comes out of the pigsty, he kisses him. Okay, this is Father. Father loves us. He loves people. Your kingdom come. The kingdom of God is everything that is perfect. It's all the, the beauty of the living God. The, the God is love. God is light. All those incredible things. Jesus says, this is what you need to pray. Your kingdom come. Because do you know what? That's what we need. You know, when I see these tankers on fire in the, in the Persian Gulf, you know, and, and all these different aeroplanes flying around these war machines, I'm thinking, oh my goodness. What we need is not the kingdom of man. That's not what we need. It's the kingdom of heaven. Your kingdom come. Oh Lord, your kingdom come. Your will be done. Here on earth. Here in Leicester. Wouldn't that be fantastic? Perfection, no violence, no drugs, no sadness, no poverty. Wouldn't that be absolutely wonderful for all that to be gone? And love and light and peace to reign. This is what we're praying. When we pray that, your kingdom come, your will be done here on earth as it is in heaven. And give us each day our daily bread. You can imagine in first century Israel, that would be a very real prayer. You didn't know where your next meal was coming from. No, not the average person. In fact, a lot higher than the average person wouldn't know where their meals are coming from. You imagine at a time of drought, oh my goodness, the fear for the next year. Where's the food going to come from? But for us, you know, we can still pray this because God knows what we want. Father knows what we need. More to the point, he knows this. An amazing God who loves us. He knows. Give us today our daily bread. What is it we need today, Lord? You know. But please, in your kindness and compassion, give us what we need. Jesus is saying, you can ask this. Because he knows. He knows the Father very, very well. Forgive us our sins. Oh, Lord. All those things that we do deliberately, the things we do by mistake, the things we do because we're stupid. Lord, forgive us those sins and help us also to forgive those who let us down. Don't let me ever be full of hate. Hate never wins. Love never fails. Okay, that is just a reality. Then it goes on, so I say to you, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, the one who seeks finds, and the one who knocks, the door will be opened up to them. And then he explains, what am I saying? So what am I saying? And Jesus looks at the blokes and he goes, okay, which of you, fathers, if your son asks for a fish, will give him a snake instead? Whoa. Or if he asks for an egg, will give him a scorpion. If you then, though you are evil, he's talking to his buddies here, and he says, though you're evil, <laughs> you know, he doesn't mince his words, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who will ask him? The Holy Spirit, the unlimited resource of the living God. What do we ask for when we ask? What do we ask for? Okay, so in conclusion, Father's Day is wonderful. Do you know what? My kids are great to me on Father's Day. Hang on a minute, I just got to mop my brow again. <laughs> I'm not ploughing a field or anything, this is ridiculous. My kids are great to me on Father's Day, and I do look, I look forward to it. My youngest is 22. I was just saying earlier, my 28-year-old got married uh, in December and it was beautiful. It was really lovely. My daughter, Hannah, uh, it was absolutely wonderful. She's been planning her wedding ever since she was about 12. Uh, it's, the bloke was immaterial, you know, but she knew what she wanted at her wedding. So the wedding was beautiful. Completely broke me. <laughs> oh my goodness but it was it, it was wonderful and my son he's just finished at university here and um, 
we've kind of edged him out to the next village. He's gone to um, to live in a house with another guy, and uh, you know, he's going to be scruffy in a bachelor's pad, you know. But um, it's good that he's moved out. He's 25. He's 25. He's just moved out. Uh, and my younger daughter, she's quite profoundly disabled, actually, um, but she will stay with us. Uh, but that, that's great. That's absolutely wonderful. It's really wonderful. But Father's Day will be great. And I will be honoured by my children, uh, which will be lovely. I'm looking forward to that. But you know what? When we, when we are thinking of our dads, and Father's Day, and I think of my dad as well at this time, although he's passed away now, but I think about my dad and all he invested in my life, um, and it's a, it's a privilege to be a dad, but isn't it a privilege to have fathers and to have dads? So in honouring our dads, let's just remember our Father in Heaven as well, uh, and give praise and honour to him. The perfect father, the one that even when we completely mess up, is the one who put his arms around us and kiss us and put a ring on our finger and, a, and the best robe. And let's have a party, you know. That is our father in heaven. He loves us so much, which is astonishing. So we'll give him glory and honour as well. Can I, can I finish with a prayer? A short prayer, can't you? Yeah. Father, we do praise you. Thank you that you are love, you are light, and in you there is no darkness at all. Thank you that we can rely on you. Oh Lord, you know our weaknesses, you know how we mess up, you, you know all of our struggles. Lord God, would you pour out your blessing in our lives, every person here in their lives, Today, this evening, would you pour out your blessing? Would you give us our daily bread? Would you cause your kingdom to come here on earth, here in Leicester, Lord God, here in every one of our lives? Let your kingdom come and let your will be done. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless you. Thank you so much for inviting me.